Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Dr. Herbert Harris, and I say to everybody, Happy New Year. Wow. And even more importantly, Happy New You. <laughs> it, it, it was just a blessing that the first day of the year came on the first Saturday of the year, and that then gave us an opportunity to uh, be with you as we open this new year. So Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. So, so many of you have joined us. I see Gwen and okay, great, great, great. Andrea on Instagram and tons of you on Facebook. <sighs> what a year. What an incredible year. Folks, this is a year. Last year was, a, was an exciting year. Let's put it like that. It was a year that we had an opportunity to grow. It was a year that things happened to us that we had no idea would ever happen. But guess what? We're still standing. I think Maya Angelou said, still I rise, still we rise, still we're here to go forth another day. So our topic for today is power start your new year. Power start your new year. And the critical thing about that is the way you start it could be the way you end it. So let us commit to start this new year with a new mindset, with a powerful mindset, with a mindset that can take us exactly where we want to go. Before we get started, I want to do a meditation to get us centered in where we need to be to do what we need to do. Just close your outer eyes. Sit straight up in your seats. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slowly. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slowly. And in this state of relaxation, we are at peace with ourselves. I am at peace with myself. Let us affirm that together. I am at peace with myself. Once more, I am at peace with myself. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. And in this state of peace and relaxation, our minds are open, receptive, and ready to learn. My mind is open, receptive, and ready to learn. Let us affirm that together. My mind is open, receptive, and ready to learn. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slowly. All right. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You know, starting off this new year, I was really thinking of what would really be important? What would be a great message for today? And we were in a restaurant recently and we were, you know, a really high end restaurant. And it was so obvious, you know, how much had gone into preparing the food. You know, it was not just that the food tasted good, but it looked good. You know, there were so many things that had obviously gone into that food preparation. It made us think of the difference between a cook and a chef. You know, a cook can prepare a great meal, a great uh, breakfast, a great dinner, a great lunch. But a chef has to not only be able to prepare a meal, but has to do the ordering process, has to prepare the menu so that you know everything is on there, the appetizers and all of the other different foods and different offerings. 
And so today, when we talk about power starting the new year, I want to take it from the perspective of a shift from the big picture. We often say you cannot see the forest for the trees. And I think that's what happens when we are interpreting the world from where we are as opposed to where we could be. When you, we have that beautiful image, we've talked about it before, where, you know, life is like climbing up a mountain. And when you're in the forest, you only see the trees. All of your challenges uh, uh, really come from trees and bushes. But as you climb the mountain of consciousness, what looked like a tree now becomes a forest. What looks like a, a forest becomes a, a, a scenic panorama. And so the higher you go up that mountain, the more you can see. And so let us this year as a first foundation for power starting our new year, let us commit to see the big picture, to see the, the totality of what we want to accomplish this year and understand what I like to call the growth cycle. And in the growth cycle, you know, all of us right now at this point in time and space are at a, have a particular consciousness and certain things are going on in our lives. Mm -hmm. We may be unhappy, we may be happy, but the growth cycle of life says that life moves in plateaus, like going up a step, that you'll have a, a challenge, that there'll be something that you want to be, do, and have, and you'll go for it. And then you get it, and you bask in it, and you enjoy it. And then there comes a time when, where it really doesn't satisfy you anymore. And you come to a thought that when you can see more, you can be more. But the more that you can see, the more that you can be. And the more that you can be, the more you can see the greater potential in you. So let us commit today to take the, the stair-step approach, to recognize that over this next year, we're going to grow. We are committed to continuous growth. And we'll move up that ladder of consciousness so that we can see more than we can be more. What is life? You know, let's, let's take this from a very fundamental thing. Life is your interpretation of the experience in the river of time. So let us look at this vision now. Existence is a river and the river of time. And so we live our lives based on in the river of time. The moment we are born, we are cast into the river of time. The river of time flows into the ocean of eternity. And so the essence of the river is the same as the essence of eternity. And that is why as we begin to let, raise our consciousness, the more that we can see, the more that we can be. As our exposure and consciousness grows, we have greater capacity to do things. So in this year, this new year, let us expand our capacity by seeing more so that we can be more. So when we look at this river of time and we're on this river of time, and the river of time is really based on our interpretation. Let me, let me go into that for a moment. I was watching a program, what is it, uh, This Is Us, I think one of the last shows, and our life is always seen through our eyes. We always say, you bring yourself to the party, and so our life is our interpretation of it, and so there was the lady who had been, uh, who was marrying one of the stars of the program, and the, and the fellow that she was with before, I think, dumped her, and she felt so terrible, and in her mind, she said that it was because she was fat. And so her interpretation of her reality was that she was fat. And so there she was in a, one of those weight loss groups at a size two, complaining how nobody would love her until she could get down to a size one. And so remember this, that your life is always your interpretation of it. And your interpretation is based on many things that we'll talk about in a moment. So then the essence of this next year, the power start this year, is to understand how can we navigate the ship that is our life 
across the river of time. We navigate that ship based on our choices. Based on our choices and the actions on our choices. That's a powerful thought, folks. So we're saying that wherever we are in life, whatever is going on with us on the sea of life, on the river of time is based on our choices. And so let's look at the basic choices, the four basic choices. Our ship consists of four elements. Element number one is the rudder. And the rudder of a ship is that which guides the ship. And so for our lives to be productive and for this to be our year for outrageous success, our rudder is our core beliefs, our understanding of who we are and what we are about. We often say, until we know who we, we, we are, until we have a relationship with who we are and what we are about, anything we do is interpreted by, you might say, a false reality. And so to start this new year, look at our rudder. Look at our value system. What is important to us? Are we honest? Are we loving? Are we caring? Do we have that humanity within us so that we, we live by the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you? So that is the rudder. And so that is the guiding principle that everything you do in life is interpreted through that rudder. We have an engine. We'll talk about goal setting, but the engine is your deep desire. And so as you move through this new year, it is key that you must understand and develop your deep desire so that you can then use that desire to move the ship that is your life where you want it to go, your goals. Your engine is also an expression of your intention. Intention is key. Intention is that will to go forward. That seeking, that knocking, that asking. So your engine is your desire. And so for this year to be your year for outrageous success, you must have a deep, powerful desire to achieve the things you say you want to achieve this year. The third element on your ship is your crew. Woo, this is one that we have to really look at because the mastermind's principle says when two or more gather on one accord, I am, and I am is the making power, the ability to get things done. And so when you put the crew on the ship that is your life, you have to be very circumspect of who you are permitting, operative word permitting, choice. Who do you choose to let on your ship of life? If you choose people who don't love you, if you choose people who don't uplift you, if you choose people who have goals contrary to your own, it's going to be a challenging trip. So it's so very, very important that we understand that the idea of who we permit to come onto our ship creates that collective vibration, the mastermind that then can either guide our ship across to the, our goals or toward the rocks to our destruction. And then finally, the fourth element is the sails. And the sails represent your attitude. So this year, you must maintain an attitude of success. Your mantra should be only success. You know, when Thomas Edison failed 3,000 times to find the filament, he never said, I have failed. He said, I have successfully identified 3,000 ways that will not work. So as you move forward this year, there will be disappointments. There will be failures. There will be things that happen that you really didn't want to happen. But pat yourself on the back and say, aha, I definitely know what I will not do next time. I can plot a better course. So your ship, your rudder, your core beliefs, your engine, your deep desires, your crew, the people you permit to come aboard, and then your sails or your attitude. The same wind that blows one ship to 
the rocks blows another ship to its destination. Why is that? Because your attitude gives you, a, gives you the ability to interpret the winds of life in a way that is beneficial for you. So always, whenever things happen to you over this next year, whatever it may be, the question to ask is, what is the lesson I must learn from this? What is the good information I should get from this experience? Why? What must I learn that will help me be a better person? So this is the ship that is your life that will be moving through this next year. So now let's look at process. How does this ship move? How does this happen? There are four elements. Number one, you've got to have vision. You see, the vision is the blueprint for your reality. Spiritual principle says, where there is no vision, the people perish. On a personal level, where you have no vision, you perish. Now, let's look at this in the context of the river of time. So if you have no vision, then that means you have no desire. That means you have no intended destination, but the river still moves. You see, the river of time always moves. So no matter what happens, whether you choose to go in a particular direction or not, you still move. And so this vision piece is critical because it is through your vision now that you are able to see more. So as we're going up that mountain of exposure, that mountain of, of consciousness, the vision line drives us. And you know, we, we, we share the story, your vision is for an appointed time. So when we were created by God, by the creator, we were created for a purpose. And that purpose now is led, we are lead, we are led to that purpose by pursuing our vision. We are led to our vision by pursuing our goals. So this, this whole vision concept is a, a big picture analysis of what you have, a tool that you have at your exposure. You have the ability to see more, to be more. You have the ability to imagine. You see, your imagination, Albert Einstein said, imagination is more powerful than knowledge because knowledge is limited. Imagination is unlimited. So imagination is your connection link between your present state of consciousness and the infinite consciousness that the river of time embodies. Cahil Gabran said that you meditate upon a dewdrop to understand the ocean. So when you have the vision, when you, you, you permit and train your imagination to see more, to be more, then you are literally creating the vibration. You're creating the blueprint for your future reality. The second element is energy, vibration. E equals MC squared. The formula for transforming energy equals mass manifestation times the speed of light squared. So therefore, manifestation equals energy divided by the speed of light. So the greater level you, the greater your level of energy, the greater your ability to manifest in your life. Now that gives you a great power, folks. Because this is saying now that when you can up your level of desire, that if there's a particular thing that you want, and that if you can focus on it with great detail, with great intensity, that is the same desire that guides your ship to where you want to go. And so this idea of energy, that there's a vibrational equivalent between anything that you seek and your internal level of vibration. So this says now that life is lived from within out. So once you focus on the things you want, and you want them badly. And when I say want them badly, my friend Kenya Cook Crooks is on, and Kenya, Kenya is a personal trainer. When a person decides that they want to change the way their body looks, that, that instead of a keg, they want a six-pack, <laughs> that they have to focus on it, and they have to literally desire it, 
and use that desire now to guide them away from the, the extra chicken wings, to guide them to be up at 6 a.m. in the morning running around that track. That energy is the key source of manifestation. If your desire is not strong enough, then a bump in the road will set you off into another portion of the sea of time. The third element is focus. You see, once we have understand the energy equivalent of things, then the way that you take control of that energy to manifest the things you desire in your life is through focus. And focus requires something that's very critical. Focus requires discipline. So, as you begin to create this new life in this new year, you must be focused on the energy, that which you desire, which is a result of your vision. And the fourth element, you must take action. And so, on these four steps now, this gives you a process that you see it, you visualize it. That you create an energy, a vibration inside, a level of desire that is equivalent to that which you desire. That you focus your energy, your activities, your resources, and everything you have at your disposal towards the realization of that desire. And then you act on it. Wow. Dr. Harris, this is really seems kind of simplistic. It is simplistic because life is simple. Life is as predictable as gravity we have the physical laws people don't generally question gravity you don't generally jump out of a window to see if it's going to work but yet you may set a goal and question yourself as to your ability to achieve it how do we now move towards where we want to be this year Think about this. Who is navigating the ship that is your life? You are navigating the ship that is your life. So who are you? We are the collection of our thoughts, our emotions, our habits, and our relationship. So this new year, let us be committed to positive thoughts. Back to choice again. Let us choose to always see the glass as half full. Let us choose to see the possibilities of whatever we want to achieve. You know, one of the ways that we can undermine our success is to choose goals that are not reasonable at that particular point in our development. It's not that they're impossible. It's just that Based on where you are right then, you need more work to it. So when, when we're talking back to the, um, to the uh, personal trainer aspect, you don't walk into Kenya's gym and automatically start snatch press 250 pounds. Mm -hmm. But you can work your way up to it. So it may be impossible on day one, but after day 68 of constant practice, it's, a, it's possible. So your thoughts must support the possibilities to be committed now always to see the good. To lack limitation, those are negative thoughts. And you can choose to see the positive ones. Choose positive emotions. It's okay to be fearful, but don't be overcome by fear. Choose positive emotions now of love, of confidence. You see, so many times in our childhood, we may have been put into a sea of just negativity. You know, unfortunately, we don't have the ability to choose our parents in a sense. There's a whole relationship there, so that's, a whole, that's another lecture. <laughs> okay. But our emotional state is often that state that is either capturing us, that has us, like, tied up. And so to make this new year your year for outrageous success, take control of your emotions. We often talk about Paul and Silas being in a, in a cage, in a, in, in a prison, and that the earthquake shook to fling the doors of the prison open. In our emotions, many of us live our lives in, the, in a cage, in a prison of our emotions. 
emotions of past trauma, of past failures, of past disappointments. And so our interpretation of life is always through that, it's always through that bad situation. Our interpretation of life is always through a lens that's based on fear, negative emotions. Look at our habits. You know, the more things that you can make to, the more things that you can make to habits. Let me just uh, handle that. <laughs> the more things that you can make to habits, the more, thing, the more things that you can reduce to habit, the more effective you'll be. When you get yourself on a schedule where you get up at the same time every day, where you lay out your clothes the night before, it puts you in a vibration, in a habit vibration, where you have the ability to get things done better. So this year, focus on our good habits. To ask that question, what are the habits that are impeding my progress? get rid of them. You have to replace habits. You just can't say, I don't do it. You have to replace a bad habit with a good habit. And then finally, your associations, those people you permit to come around you. You have to establish some rules for how to handle people. Steve Harvey said, don't get into a relationship for 90 days. I don't care how much you like the person, how much you love them, how much they seem to be Mr. Right or Miss Right. Don't rush into it. Give them 90 days. Anybody who can do right and be the same person for 90 days, that might be the person. People can deceive you for a week. They may even deceive you for a month. They may even deceive you for two months, but 90 days. Steve says, if, you, if, you, if a person can be congruent for 90 days, then that might be somebody you get into a relationship with. So these four keys on how to navigate your ship, to control your thoughts, to think positive thoughts, to control your emotions, to feel positive emotions, to control your habits so that you only do, you commit to automatic, the good things that will lift you up and to control your associations. There are four questions that I think will help guide us through this next year. Question number one, what will I not do? What will I not do? Hey, that's a question that can give you some insight. And you think back on this last year and as you go forward, what will I not do this year? I will not permit other people to pull me away from my, my chosen journey. I will not get into a relationship until I'm clear about who that person really is. I will not sign up for another course until I understand how it all fits in with where I want to go in the long term. I will not permit myself to be swayed by emotions that are not mine. I will not permit other people to define me. All the things that you will not do. And then number two, to make a list of the things you will do, the things that are important. I will go to bed. I will get eight hours sleep. I will do my meditation every day. I will be on time for work. I will read a book a month. In other words, all those things that you will do can transform your life into what you want it to be. The third question is, what must you become? I didn't say what do you want to become, but what you need to become. To identify those needs of being. Sometimes many of us are into this financial thing. I need to have a certain amount of money. Well, then express it as a need and then go for it. I need to be a better person. I need to be more confident. I need to be clear about my goals. So what must you be? And then the fourth question, what must you have? One of the things that's happened over this pandemic is we have found that many of the material things that we thought we needed to have, we don't really need them. Our needs have gone, gone smaller. Our external and material needs have gone smaller, but our spiritual needs have grown greater. 
And so finally, this is our, our, our class of fours. So the questions, what will you not do? What must you do? What must you, who must you become? And what must you have? What are the needs? And then finally, the, the operational steps. Number one, you must be self-motivated. You know, one thing about this pandemic and being alone is you found that you have to, you have to wake yourself up. You have to ring your own bell. You have to be your own cheering squad. You have to be your own cheerleader. So you've got to be self-motivated. You can't wait for somebody else to get you going. Ring your own bell. Number two, you got to be self-responsible. You see, if, if you can't take responsibility for the bad stuff, you can't make it into good stuff. The moment you say, I am responsible for whatever my condition is, that empowers you to be able to fix it. If you're not responsible, then you don't have the capacity to fix it. So to be self-responsible, that whatever you have in life, whatever you're experiencing over next year, take ownership of it. And so if it's not quite what you wanted, take ownership from a lesson point of view. If it is what you wanted, take ownership from a victory point of view. But whatever it is, you did it. The third self to be self-determined. And this goes back to that desire. On the ship that is your life, there will be times that it seems that the, the river is not even moving. <laughs> Think about it when you're sitting in traffic somewhere. It's like time stands still. <laughs> well, it is your desire. It is your determination that keeps you moving. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. When you are determined, then you go forward no matter what. If there's no wind, crank up the engine. The sails are down, crank up the engine. It's your desire, your determination that will take you where you want to go. And then finally, the fourth self is to be self-functional. And that is why we do these classes on Saturday mornings and um, share our message on Saturday mornings because the more you know, the more you are able to do. The principle of expansion, seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. Ask and it shall be answered. The whole idea of functionality is you have to do something. If you don't do something, the river of time will take you wherever it wants you to go. We were not created to go with the flow. We were created to do something important. Learn the principles. And one of the reasons that our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success, has been so universally accepted is because we were able to reduce the, the functional principles down to the point where you know that what you think you get the first law of success, to know that you can change your life by changing your thinking. The second law of success, to know the law of relationships, how important it is to surround yourself with good people, the ninth law. The law of persistence, to, to hang in there no matter what, that as long as you keep plugging, you're going to get there. To understand the function of these laws and how to apply them in your life. So today, to, whew, to wrap up, once again, let me thank you so much for being here. Let me wish each of you a happy, incredible new year, a year for outrageous success. And let us do a brief recap that we live on the sea of time, that our ship moves upon the sea of time based on our choices, that our choices are impacted by our value system, our desire, the people we have around us, and the attitude we permit to come into our being. That we use the powers of navigation, we use the power of vision to create a blueprint for our life, to reduce that blueprint to goals and be committed to live by the book. That we understand the value, the energy, that there's an energy equivalent for everything that we want. That we create vibration to attract the things into our life. That focus is where we take control of our energy and action where we put it, the rubber hits the road. 
our thoughts, our emotions, our habits, and our associations define who we are. And so when we go forward, be clear on what we will not do, what we will do, what we must become, and what we must have. And then use the four principles to be self-motivated, to ring your own bell, to be self-responsible, to take responsibility for what is, to be self-determined, to have a level of desire that's so strong that nothing can stop you, and to be self-functional, to understand that it's all about how you take effective action and make good decisions so that you can be what you want to be. You can do what you want to do, and you can have whatever you want to have, always knowing that the best is yet to come. And so it is. Just take a deep breath. Thank you so much for being with us today. Please like our broadcast, like it, click on it, and make some comments about what you're going to do this year. Maybe write some of the things you will not do so that you can announce it to the world. Write some of the things that you have to do so that you can announce it to yourself. <laughs> Folks, be sure to get your Setting and Achieving Your Goals booklet. This is a great tool that can help you. The link is here in the broadcast, but it's Success is Mine, www.successismine.net. And you get our free Setting and Achieving Your Goals booklet. This booklet, if you get it right away and work with it, it can help you lay the foundation to make this year your year for outrageous, incredible success. Always knowing that the best is yet to come. And so it is.